course, you know, a happy customer will tell four to six other people, and an unhappy customer will tell eight to twelve. Bad news travels twice as fast. So how do customers rate us? They rate us expedient, adequate, and excellent. And I want to talk about each one of those briefly. Expedient service, what does that mean? It means that the customer service provider or even the company doesn't care. There's been some examples of that in the business world. You know, we've had uh, Wall Street brokers sell worthless junk bonds or even bankers who sold mortgages that people couldn't afford. And what were they after? They were after a quick buck. They weren't really concerned about the needs of their customers. Locally in the town I was at, they had this crazy used car organization that had this TV ad. And this big hulking of a guy came out on the TV. He looked like he was Conan the Barbarian. And he goes, you want a car? No problem. We'll get you a car. And then he goes, you have no money? No problem. We'll get you the money. And then he goes, if you have no credit, no problem. We'll get you credit. And then he picks up this little guy next to him, lifts him up in the air, throws him through a windshield in the car. And then he goes, but if you don't pay your bill, it's going to be a problem. Now, that ad got national attention. In fact, news stations all across the country played it and said, whoa, some people go to no lengths to get customers. And then you know what happened? They didn't have a service department. And they didn't take care of customers who had problems or those who ended up and found out they had 20 25% interest rates. They didn't care. And unfortunately, about 10 to 15% of people and businesses don't care. The second level, I believe, is even more devious than the one I just described. It's called adequate service. Now, of course, companies don't say adequate service. You know what they say instead? They say, we have good service. Could you imagine your organization with the following slogan? We're no worse than anybody else? I don't think so. So they say, we have good service instead. After all, who isn't for customer service? I mean, customer service is kind of like motherhood. Uh, the American flag and apple pie a la mode all rolled up into one. Everybody likes it. You know, Sears for years was the uh, leader in retail. And then a little old company out of Bentonville, Arkansas, blew right by him. Walmart did. Sears has had some trouble. They've regrouped, tried to refocus what customers they serve and what they do. But they've fallen into the adequate category, which we call moments of mediocrity. The expedient category is called moments of misery. The third category we call excellence. And that's where you more than satisfy the customer. You're a little better, a little different, a little more effective in what you do in response to the customer needs. There's a company called Disney Corporation that does theme parks better than anyone. In fact, they've got 18, 20, 21-year-old kids who work in those organizations. They get more training and education than CEOs and the top salespeople around the world. And that's why they're so good. They deliver moments of magic. There's another organization in the eastern part of the United States called Wegmans. Wegmans is a grocery store chain, and they're consistently rated number one in retail all across America. And why? Because you have an experience there, not just go shopping. You have to see it to believe it. But they deliver moments of magic. Now, how does this relate to you? Well, we're going to put it all together in what we call the cycle of service. And what the cycle of service is, is a process of all the interactions you have with the customer from beginning to end. So it could be in the beginning like the greeting that you have for the customer, maybe a little small talk, uh, listening to the customer, answering some of their questions, maybe showing them your product or explaining some of the features and benefits of your product, answering a question, uh, doing a transaction with the customer, saying thank you, and then the customer leaves. Now, each of these interactions are a moment of truth, and everybody has them. We might have 10 to 20 of them that fit in any particular job. They can be positive or they can be negative. According to research, it takes 20 positives, moments of truth, to make up for one negative one. So we need to be adept at knowing how to handle these and do them well. Now, what we found is that there are five key moments of magic. And that's what we're going to spend the rest of these sessions all about is the detail related to each one. But let me introduce them for you. The first one we call mental psych. What mental psych is about is being positive, upbeat, and enthusiastic, getting ready to serve the customer well. The second one is the greeting. The greeting is just being courteous and polite and friendly with our customers. 
The third one is all about meeting the need. And that comes down to listening and asking questions and understanding what the customer wants and then delivering that to them. The fourth one is what we call follow through or following up. What do we do to go the extra mile to serve the customer well? And then the fifth one, whether we like it or not, there will be problems and it's all about handling problems. So we'll dig into the details in each one of those in the sessions that follow. Let me summarize and talk to you about the Aqua Marina in Florida. Have you heard about that? The Aqua Marina studies ocean life and in this day and age of taking care of the planet and it's an important thing that's done. Well, these scientists captured a barracuda and a Spanish mackerel, and they put them in the same tank of water and put a glass plate in between them. Barracuda likes to eat mackerel. The barracuda was hungry, went after that mackerel, bam, hit that glass plate head on, swam away. Went after it, swam away. Boom, 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 and then it swam away. Then it went after it, stopped, and swam away. Went after it, stopped, and swam away. Scientists now are observing this phenomenon and they take the glass plate out of the water. Here's the barracuda over here, agitated. Here's the mackerel, way over here. Barracuda sees it, goes after it, stops, swims away. Goes after it, stops, swims away. Why did it stop? It was conditioned, wasn't it? That it can only go so far. And you know what the truth of the matter is? All of us get conditioned about how well we think we can do it with our jobs or what kind of service we can provide, let alone the organization being somewhat conditioned as well. Superstars break through. 